Hello and welcome to my channel. My channel is dedicated to exposing Watchtower lies, deception and cover-up. My name is Marse and I was one of Jehovah's Witnesses for over 30 years. I served as a regular pioneer for 10 of those years. I was first contacted in the door-to-door -door ministry back in 1987 and I finally left the organisation in 2022. This video is talking about what happened when I found myself on the door-to-door -door ministry with my friend who's a Jehovah's Witness only last week. So I'm going to get into what happened and how this came about and what the outcome of it has been. So as I've said in my videos recently, I'm in the process of moving house and uh, you can see that this house is starting to look a bit really bare now. Um, I'm going to be moving out next week. So I wanted a um, electric wood burning stove to make the bedroom look really cosy in my new cottage. And so I decided to look on Facebook Marketplace and I found the perfect stove on there. So I said to my friend, the one who is a Jehovah's Witness, who doesn't know that I don't go to the meetings. Uh, she's the one who's the interior decorator and designer with her own business. And she's um, decorating my new place. So I said to her, can we go and pick up this stove from this area of um, the city in which we're living in? And she said, yes. So we, we set off and we went to the other side of the city to pick up, pick up this stove. And when we got onto the street where the uh, seller lived, my friend said to me, oh, um, my Bible call lives on this street. And I said to her, well, this is not your territory. Um, you know, you don't live around here. And she said, no, but I switched kingdom homes. And for um, private reasons, she had moved from one kingdom hall to another. And so now this area um, of the city is actually a territory. So she then said to me, after we picked up the stove, I'd like to just call and say hello to the lady because I've not managed to get to see her. I've been so busy with the decorating business and, and da da da. Uh, but she said, I just want to make contact and say I haven't forgotten about her. And so we picked the stove up and she said to me, you know, just come with me. I know we're not dressed for it because we weren't dressed. I'd got, you know, I, I'd got jeans on. I certainly didn't look like a Jehovah's Witness um, on the ministry. And she got on a pair of uh, jogging bottoms and a sweatshirt with paint on it. So she she was dressed for decorating and um, certainly didn't look like witnesses on the ministry, either of us. But she still wanted to go and make this contact with this lady. So we went across the road and she knocked on the door and the lady came out. And... Um, we start she started having a conversation and the lady said oh you don't look like you normally look and she said oh, i'm on a decorating job in the area and um, i just wanted to call and say hello and the lady said that's really nice and this lady was a really really nice lady and um, she started saying that she was how concerned she was about things that were going on in the news about the things that were happening in, in the Middle East and, uh, you know, in Israel and Palestine and such as that. And um, she was also concerned about the riots that we've had recently to do with immigration and things like that. And um, we've had uh, a stabbing in the area that was uh, quite high profile. And so all these things were things that she, she said she, she was concerned about. And she said, you know, I just feel that things are getting worse and worse. And um, she, she just 
reminded me of myself back in 1987. She sort of, she's got a daughter and she says she's worried about her daughter's future as well. And so she just reminded me of myself back then. You know, I was concerned about the, back in 1987, it was the Bob Geldof famine, band aids or live aid or whatever it is. I think it was band aid, the first one. And, you know, the starving people and, um, you know, all these things that were really uh, in the news back then when I was um, contacted on the door work, door to door ministry. And, you know, the kingdom message, <clears throat> as I've said before, is an attractive message. It sort of offers you a way out of all this. And this is what this lady said, you know, she wanted to see. And so you can see why people are drawn to it. And along come, you know, when they're suffering or worried, along come Jehovah's Witnesses with the so-called good news of the kingdom. And, you know, the next thing you're involved with the watchtower. And so, um, you know, she, she just reminded me so, so much of me back then. And I thought, oh, you know, she's going to end up getting involved with this. And so, you know, my friend uh, spoke to her and said, we were there about 10 minutes and we just talked about general things and decorating the garden and um, other, you know, she's got a nice garden, she's talking about the plants in the garden, asking a lot about decorating and, um, you know, Laurie just said, um, I, you know, I will try and get to you. I just didn't want you to think I wasn't going to come back, uh, but I've been really busy. And so, um, you know, the lady was very, very nice. And so we left after about 10 minutes. And so that is how I came to be on the door-to-door -door ministry. If uh, long after I'd left, it was something that was completely unexpected. But the good outcome of it is that I, um, I'd got the address of where I bought the stuff from on my phone and the postcode and the lady lived across the road at number 17. So um, I decided to write a letter to this lady. And what I wanted to do wasn't to slay off Jehovah's Witnesses, but was to get a thinking about researching the origins of the organisation behind the people who knock on the door because the people who knock on the door are very, very nice people generally. You know, my friend's a lovely, lovely person. I love her dearly. That's why I can't give her up. I'm very loath to say anything to her. What's going to, you know, make her... Uh, destroy what we've got as a as a as a friends as a friendship and we've been friends now for over 20 years so um the people who knock on the doors are lovely people in generally and um the message they bring is a very appealing message um especially when you've got things going on in your life or you you know you're worried about the way what you're seeing in the news or whatever it, it offers you something better so, but it's not those people that they need to be looking at it is the organization behind the name Jehovah's Witnesses that they need to investigate before becoming involved. And so this is what I wrote in uh, in my draft letter for this lady. Now, I haven't posted this draft letter yet. It's, um, I'm going to fine tweak it before I send it. But what I've done is I've sort of 
drawn attention to the fact that um, high control group religions are operating in the area and are calling um, to talk to people in their homes. And um, although the people who knock on the doors are very nice, it's important to investigate the organisation behind the religious people who knock on the door. And in order to um, help them do that, I provided um, a link to um, jwfacts.com so they can um, start the investigation process into um, where these um, w where the religion originated. It tells you all about the shunning practices and everything else. As people know who have left the, the um, Watchtower, and um, it's a very very good source of information. And so people, I believe that people, if they want to join the JWs, then that's up to them, whether they do or not. But I do believe that they should be informed accurately as to both sides of it. And this is what I wanted to do with this lady. I didn't want to slay off the watchtower. I wanted to draw attention to the facts about the origins of the organisation behind it. And once she's done that research, she can decide herself if she wants to become involved. And I just wish that back in 1987, that somebody would have said to me, Marcia, you need to look at the organisation. You need to look at some of the practices. Go and do a bit of research before you get involved. And I would have done that. But I didn't do it because no one sort of said it and it just sounded so credible and that's how I got involved with it. And I had 30 years inside. And, you know, it was very traumatic to find out, as I've said, that it's not, not the God's organisation and it's not the truth. So, you know, it, I feel that something good's been accomplished by that. Um, and, you know, what I've said isn't offensive to um, my friend. You know, she'd probably still carry on calling with a Bible and quote a scripture and what I've used to, and the lady probably listen to it, but won't get involved any further. And I think that's what's very important to happen if she wants to make that decision to put that choice before that and i think that was what the lord did and i think that's why he put me on that doorstep because he keeps doing these things so uh you know to be able to sort of um you know to find myself on on the door with the jehovah's witness wasn't something that i planned to do but it's something that actually um, has accomplished a good purpose in the end. So that's the first thing concerning my friend. Now, another thing that concerned her was she told me the other the other day when I was we were working at the cottage, she said, oh, um, I've got a shepherding call coming up. And I said, all right. She says, but it's at the Kingdom Hall. And I said, have you asked for it? And she said, no, um, the, the elders have asked to speak to me. And I said, all right, what's this about then? So she says, I don't know. I'm hoping I've not done anything wrong. So she went off to the meeting um, the next day and she called me as immediately after coming out of the Kingdom Hall. She phoned me up and said that she'd had this meeting and it was about an auxiliary pioneer form that she'd put in. She put in an auxiliary pioneering form. And she said that they said they weren't approving it because she'd missed some meetings and they wanted to know why this was that she wasn't in attendance at the meetings. And she said that she um, felt upset about this because she's got a business. As I said, she's uh, an interior designer and decorator. 
she is married. Her husband isn't a Jehovah's Witness. She's got a, a four-year-old daughter as well that they, um, you know, are looking after, and um, she, she's, you know, that demands attention. And um, you know, her husband's family are not Jehovah's Witnesses either. So she, she's got a lot on trying to keep everything running. And she, you know, sometimes she's attended meetings on the Zooms. She works as well as having this um, interior decorating business. She's also got um, a job where she um, works nights at, um, you know, is uh, a, a sleeping carer for people in sheltered accommodation. So she she's works very hard. And, you know, they, they're trying to, you know, do up their own house as well as helping other people do up theirs and, and things like that. So I, she, she just says, Martha, I'm doing all I can do. I can't do any more. And I just feel really upset that, um, you know, that it's not what I'm doing. It's like I'm not good enough. It's just not good enough. And she was really upset about it. And so I said to Matt, said to her, I would like to know when they're going to tell you that your contributions aren't good enough because you're not in good standing enough to put money in the contribution box. And she looked at me and I said, they're telling you that you're not good enough to go and knock on the doors for 30 hours, but you can go out on the ministry. Uh, but... You know, that, but you, you know, you can go out, but you're not good enough. You're not in good standing enough to do it for 30 hours and have the title announced at the Kingdom Hall that you're a pioneer. And so we're back to the problem that I had with pioneering and, you know, having the title and, and uh, you know, people, uh, you know, being laughed at and sniggered at who only managed to do an hour on the ministry or people, you know, not pioneers and things like that. They had got derogatory terms at the pioneer, pioneer meetings for those people. So it set me off again a bit, this, and, um, you know, she, she sort of looked at me and I said this about the money and she said, I said, are they going to tell you you can't put money in the contribution box because you're not in good standing? I was they're never going to tell, tell you that. And she sort of, I could see a, a, a thinking she was thinking about what I said. So, you know, I just, um, I felt so sorry for her because I could see it was causing a pain. Um, but then a few days later, they, the elders, um, she went to the Kingdom Hall and they said to her, about um, that she was now approved and um, she could um, be considered to be an auxiliary pioneer and she said to me I've missed like nearly four days of pioneering hours while they've been making up the mind as to whether I'm in good standing to be a pioneer, an auxiliary pioneer or not so um, and it all just seems so fake and false because I said to her, look, show me a scripture where it tells you that in the Bible that you need to be approved of to go out on the ministry. Show me the scriptures. And uh, she she just looks at me, but, um, you know, I try and get thinking about these things, but, you know... It's upset her, and um, it's interesting that she came straight on the phone and spoke to me about it, rather than, you know, other friends. She's um, got, so, um, you know, I just hope that, you know, the little seeds I keep setting are... are uh, going to sort of make her just suddenly wake up because she's a born in witness she was born in as i said her, her dad's an elder um her, her daughters uh, um, and her husband 
both um, missionaries and pioneers in uh, a country abroad. So, um, you know, the family are quite steeped in the Watchtower. And I just keep praying and praying that she's going to wake up, that the other witness that studied with me is going to wake up and, um, you know, to open their eyes to what's going on really in the Watchtower. And something else that happened, I was sat in a cafe with um, one of the ladies from my prayer group having a coffee in Costa Coffee. And I was approached then by a Jehovah's Witness that I knew in there. And um, she came up and said, hello, you're right. And uh, she's got two children with her. And the one of the children says, how do you know my mummy? And before I could say anything, uh, she said, she, she used to be in Kim, Kimberley congregation. Or whatever the combination I used to be in. So um, she asked how I was and what I've been. She it's funny because she assumed that um, the the lady that I was sat with um, was a Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> um, she probably died if she didn't know and that she was uh, you know a born again Christian from a from a local church, but. Um, yeah, so these things just keep on happening. As I said, I've got the neighbour who's a Jehovah's Witness who lives in the cottage just below me. And I bumped into him the other day. I was getting into my car to come home and he was all dressed up in his suit, all smartly dressed up. And uh, he says, I'm just going to the Kingdom Hall. And uh, it's come to my attention that he is um, supposed to be... Um, one of the anointed remnants. So um, according to the ante, he takes the emblems at the memorial. So I think it would be quite an interesting thing when this all kick kicks in um, with all this stuff. But, um, you know, I keep praying about these things and um, this seems to be that what, what the Lord is doing is uh, putting me in these areas. So... Um, so that's what's been happening in my life. Um, the cottage um, is coming along really, really well. And uh, I'm going to be moving in next week um, from this house to there. And I will um, do a video of the uh, cottage when it's all done. And, um, you know, that you can see because it, it is the answer to a prayer. I've said this was answering my prayer. So nobody still answered me that question. Um, but the prayer that I prayed after leaving the Watchtower about a, a Wentworth Cottage and um, getting the perfect Wentworth Cottage and finding it all, all the things that I need for it, you know, to do it and dress it so beautifully has come together so, so easily. And, you know, for Paul and me, it will be an absolute haven of peace. And, uh, you know, we're busy now um, starting to organise our wedding as well. So we've got that all all coming up. So it's busy, busy, busy time for, for both of us. And um, so, yeah, I will put a video up so that you can see where we've gone and what we've been actually blessed with. And I'll be asking that question again. Who has answered the prayer? So until the next time, uh, I want to just thank you for watching. Thank you for um, your comments and um, for my subscribers. Uh, I think I've only got about five left before I hit 500 subscribers. And that's a big milestone for somebody like me. So um, until the next time, I'm just going to say to you, bye.